What's going on guys? Jacob Borth back here with another video of Jacob's Life in Vegas. Coming to you guys in a beautiful morning here in Southern Nevada. A little cool today. People are playing tennis right over here. Around the corner from me. People out walking the dogs. Nice day here in Southern Nevada. It's great. Sun is, sun is on you. It's a little cold here in Vegas even though it might be a little cool. You have the sun on you. It feels great. So here's what we're going to be talking about today though. About living in Las Vegas and uh, things that surprised me. Um, you know when I was moving here and living here and a lot of things I just didn't know. So things that surprised me about living here in Las Vegas, I'm going to share 13 of them with you guys. Uh, if you guys have more that you think, you know, I missed, put them down in the comments and we'll do a part two for this video. And for those of you that are looking to move here, or you live here now, and you're looking to, you know, buy a home and all that kind of stuff, you know, the whole moving process, I'll put a link down below because I know a really cool realtor that you guys have seen on the channel many times. Uh, her name is Lacey. She also works with the Great Mortgage Center that I know you've seen on the channel too, named Amber, okay? So if you guys need help with that whole buying process, no matter where you're coming from, they can help you with that process, all right? So let's jump into this. First thing that surprised me about living here in Las Vegas that I did not know uh, when I was coming here was that there's no sales tax on grocery food here in Nevada. So Nevada is known for having no state income tax. Lots of people know that, especially when they first start looking to move here. That's one of the big things that draws people to live here is the fact there's no state income tax, especially retirees. But our sales tax is kind of high, but when it comes to groceries, there's no sales tax on groceries. So when you go to, you know, wherever store, uh, Smith's, Vons, Walmart, Target, and you're buying groceries, you're not going to pay sales tax on, you know, your steak, your chicken, uh, and that kind of thing. So that's one that I did not know and surprised me when I first got here. Now, second we'll talk about is low property tax. That's another one I didn't really know uh, when I was first coming here. I was kind of surprised to hear that it's as low as it is. I think we're the fourth lowest in the country as far as, you know, just if you were to rank all 50 states, because again, I knew no sales tax, or excuse me, no state income tax, excuse me. But I was kind of surprised the property tax was as low as it is, because oftentimes you have a state like Texas, they'll have no state tax, where their property tax is known for being higher to kind of offset that. In Nevada, uh, we've got zero state income tax and a low property tax because our sales tax makes up so much of the revenue because, of course, you know, the tourists who come here, right? Third thing that's surprising about living here in Las Vegas, I don't think I knew this until after I'd actually lived here for a couple of years. Maybe I saw it like as a fun fact or something when I was doing research, but um, many of the car dealerships here actually close on Sunday. And actually just about all of them are, except for I think like CarMax and you know maybe like some other ones. That's actually a, a historical thing here in Las Vegas um, where basically in the past, a lot of the car dealerships had like an unofficial agreement. They just were not gonna be open on Sunday. And I was talking to, I think, a, a local who told me, he says, a big reason for that history is because here in Las Vegas, lots of people know about, like, the mafia um, here in Vegas, right? And that's what we think of like, who built Vegas. But, no, there's a big Mormon population here in the Vegas area. And, you know, particularly this mountain west part of the country, right? Utah, Idaho, um, that kind of thing. There's a large Mormon population. And in the early years of Las Vegas, lots of the car dealerships were owned by guys who were Mormon. And basically, they had an informal agreement. They were just going to take Sunday off. Um, to be with the family and so the car dealerships are not going to be open on sunday and that brings me to the fourth thing that surprised me about um living here in las vegas so like i said a lot of people think of vegas um they think of the mafia right who built vegas and that kind of thing i had heard of howard hughes or actually i used to think he was mormon but he wasn't um he just employed lots of people who were mormon but here in the vegas valley there's a big mormon and jewish population that a lot of people probably don't realize before they're getting ready to move here so when you do come and you look here and you're moving here and that kind of thing, you look in the history of Las Vegas, um, you know, you'll see the mafia, Mormons, and Jews all played a big role in this town's early development. Lots of the mobsters, right? Bugsy Siegel, Lefty Rosenthal were Jewish, uh, in case you didn't know. Here in the Vegas area, you'll see Summerlin area tends to be more Jewish. If you ever look for like synagogues and um, shuls and things like on the map, uh, I think there's a private Jewish school in Summerlin as well, if I'm not mistaken. So you'll see more of that in Summerlin. And then you look Henderson, Boulder City, you'll see that's more Mormon. Boulder City particularly, um, that's been a small town for a long time. They actually have growth ordinances that prevent them uh, from expanding too much. But Boulder City and Henderson, you'll see are more Mormon. Summerlin, you'll see is more Jewish. But there's a large Mormon and Jewish population here in the Vegas Valley. The fifth thing I didn't know before coming here, and I said, maybe I saw this before when I was doing a little bit of research about working in hospitality, was the work cards. <laughs> the work cards. And I talked about this in previous videos several years ago um, because you know you have to get your sheriff's card. It's basically a background check is what it is. Uh, your TAM card and your health cards, I think they've changed the names of those. Or they changed the names at least one of those a few years ago. So you have to get those cards. You're going to be working in like hospitality. Um, the TAM, was it, was it transportation of alcohol management or something like that? I don't know. Something about alcohol management 
and I didn't, I never served alcohol at my job, right? The job I was going into did not require me to serve alcohol, but I still had to take a, a course and pay a fee to get this card. Same thing with the health card. Uh, I think now it's called a food handler's card. So I didn't handle food. My job wasn't requiring me to handle food, but I still had to get this card. So, and if you're going to go into gaming, um, I think it's, I think it's just called a gaming card. If I'm not mistaken, someone, if someone knows, I'm sure somebody knows, put it down in the comments section. If you're going to like work in the casino, I think it's called a gaming card you have to get as well. And these cards are different fees. I think for the sheriff's, the TAM and the health, right? So the sheriff's card, alcohol and the food, I think it was like a few hundred bucks and they, um, one's good for three years, one for four, one for five. So I mean, it's a little bit of an annoyance, but I mean, coming from like California where like, I don't have to pay state income tax, it's kind of like a nice offset. So I either pay state income tax every single year in California or come here and pay, you know, fees for these cards you've got to renew every three to five years it's a pretty good trade-off it's just another way though that the uh, government here does make some money is from fees and things like that sixth thing that surprised me about living here in las vegas and i had no idea about this one before i moved here was the monsoons in the summertime that we get because i remember like i still remember it, it was like the first um, may that i lived here driving down the freeway and seeing a sign a billboard that's like slow down for puddles slow down for flooded streets and I'm like, dude, it's May. It's about to be June. Like, what idiot put that sign up? Like, it's Vegas. It's hot. June. Summer. Like, heat. What the hell is this, what is this sign for? <laughs> well, I learned. I definitely learned uh, that here in Las Vegas, here in Southern Nevada, that we usually do have monsoons in the summertime. I think it was 2019 or 2020. We had, like, none for once. It was really bizarre. And some years they've kind of come late. Like, you don't want to have any for really... You really won't have many in June and July, but like in August you'll get them, or maybe you'll get them early in June, and then not that much the rest of the summer. But we do have monsoons here. I have done um, videos about it. I've shown some footage of, of it here. So yeah, we do get monsoons here, well, at least by our definition, a monsoon, uh, in the summertime here in Las Vegas. The seventh thing I uh, that's surprising about living here in Las Vegas, and like many people, and like many of the tourists who come here, is how cold it can get in the wintertime. So again, I thought moving here to Vegas, it was just gonna be, you know, heat, like almost year round because that's what you think of when you think of Las Vegas. Now in the winter time, at night, it can get below freezing, okay? And there's wind here that picks up. So if the wind picks up and it's nighttime, ooh man, ooh man. And it is dry in the winter time here too, okay? So, you know, the winter time here, there's not much moisture in the air, like winter or summer here in Las Vegas. So if you use some moisture in the air, like when it's cold, whether it's, you know, down south or east coast or, you know, or on the coast of California, whatever it is, you're not going to get that moisture. <laughs> you're not going to get that moisture here in the winter time. It's going to be dry in the winter. It's going to be cold. You want to keep your chapstick and lotion and all that kind of stuff still on you because your skin, your lips, um, they're going to get dry. It's just the nature of uh, the nature here. The eighth thing that's surprising about living here in Las Vegas is the happy hour that they do. So I didn't know that places did like reverse happy hour or triple happy hour and things like that. But it really does make sense because you think of all the hospitality workers here. So many people, you know, do not work a regular like 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. job here. So with so many people who work, you know, swing shift or they were graveyard shift because they are in, you know, housekeeping or they do security or, um, you know, they're a, a waitress or they're a, a cashier or whatever, whether it's one of these clubs, these hotels, these casinos, uh, maybe they're a tour guide, right? And they do, you know, the early morning tours and they're off the other, you know, half the day kind of thing. All kinds of different time slots that people work here because hospitality and tourism is so big. And in a town where a lot of the entertainment options are 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you need people to work those hours. So you could be a bartender and you could, you know, work the morning shift. You might be working 5 a.m. to 1 p.m., you know, so because people do, they come into the bar, they get off work, maybe they get off work graveyard at 7, 8 in the morning and they'll go have a drink at 9 a.m. Like that's perfectly normal here because they're going to bed at, you know, noon or 1 p.m. They're getting up at 9 p.m. to start their graveyard shift or whatever the case is. So you have people who like, they go to the bar, they drink, they go get, you know, they have dinner like at breakfast time and that kind of thing just because that's how their sleep schedule is set up. That brings me to the ninth thing I didn't know and I had no idea about this one before moving here. I never heard of this concept in my life until I moved here to Las Vegas, but it does actually make sense in, the, in a tourist city, is the local discounts, right? Or local love you'll oftentimes hear referred to as. So things like, you know, buy one, get one show tickets, uh, discounts at buffets, uh, nightclubs on industry now, you can get in for free if you're local. Shooting ranges will have discounts for locals. Lots of the tourist stuff will have discount prices for locals. Um, I know the strat years ago for the entire month of december they're letting locals like go up to the top uh, for free oftentimes places have discounts on rides and that kind of thing lots of the tourist attractions will have local discounts for them which i didn't know like just for 
having your Nevada ID and showing you live, you're like, you get, you know, a few dollars off, you get 50% off or whatever the case is. It's like, just for living here, I get a discount on all this stuff that, you know, the tourists have to pay, you know, a crap ton of money for, but you do. You get discounts just for living here in Las Vegas. You show them your Nevada ID that you live here and bam, there's your discount, right? There's your 50% off here. You can get in for free or whatever, or, you know, you get some kind of benefit from it oftentimes. And I had no idea about that. That's surprising, but that was a really great surprise to find out. Now, the 10th thing that's surprising about living here in Las Vegas is the mountains being so close here. Because again, coming here to Las Vegas, I'm like, okay, I'm going to be in the desert. Like, I'm going to be out in the desert and freaking nowhere. There's just going to be empty desert without who knows how many bodies buried in it from the mafia as far as the eye can see, right? No. I mean, yeah, there's, there's desert here. Okay, yes, obviously we are in the desert. But the amount of mountains that you can go if you want to go hiking and that kind of thing, whether it's Mount Charleston, whether you want to go over to uh, Red Rock and Summerlin, whether you want to go to Sloan Canyon and uh, Henderson, whether you want to head out to like um, Boulder City, or if you want to head over to Utah, right, that's not that far away, or if you want to go to uh, like Valley of Fire, I just thought it was going to be flat desert land as far as you could see. No, we are surrounded by mountains. There's plenty of places. If you want to go and get out of, you know, the valley right here, the Vegas Valley, you want to go do some hiking, you can actually see some more greenery if you go up to Mount Charleston. Um, I had no idea about any of that. I had no idea about the mountains being in the area. I just thought it was going to be desert for miles and miles and miles. But no, we have mountains and they're absolutely beautiful. The 11th thing I didn't know about living here or that uh, surprised me about moving here to Las Vegas was the whole idea of... Um, Unincorporated Clark County versus like the city of Las Vegas and the city limits. I think I'd read that like on city data or something when I was, you know, researching moving here. I didn't pay much attention to it until I got here. Then I understood that if you ever look on the map and you look at the city limits, there's only three official cities here, like in the, in the Vegas area. You have um, Henderson, which is its own separate city from Las Vegas. You have North Las Vegas, which is its own separate city. You have the city limits of Las Vegas. So the city limits of Las Vegas, and even the map for the, how the city limits are drawn is kind of goofy uh, for the city of Las Vegas. Everything else outside of that in this area is unincorporated Clark County. So you may live in Spring Valley. You may live in Enterprise, Winchester, Paradise, right? Most of the Las Vegas Strip um, is in Paradise, which is not a town. There's no mayor. They don't have their own police force. There's not their own city council. It's a census designated place. It's unincorporated Clark County. So if you live in unincorporated Clark County, you're governed by the Clark County Commission. So if you want to get like a, um, you know, a business license, you have to go in from the state of Nevada. But, you know, the Clark County Commission may say, hey, you need to get a business license. Um, or if you live in the city limits of Las Vegas, they're going to say you need to get a, bit, a business license from the city, not from the county. And they operate on different rules, city versus county. They can pass their own ordinances. So lots of people think like the city of Las Vegas, they think of the mayor of Las Vegas as having power and authority over like the big casinos in the Strip. No, the city council has zero authority over the majority of the hotels and casinos on the Strip. From Sahara going north is the city limits of Las Vegas. So the Strat going into downtown, that's the city of Las Vegas governs. From the Sahara, say, uh, and where the Strat is going south, so you know, the Sahara Hotel, right, you, all the way to Mandalay Bay, the city of Las Vegas has no authority over that because that's in the county, right? That's, that surprised me. Didn't know that before I moved here. And we'll talk about the 12th thing that surprised me, uh, that I didn't know when I got here. I thought um, coming here, there's going to be just tons of California transplants, which there are, uh, and there's more coming. There's no shortage of California transplants, including yours truly. But when I came here, uh, it surprised me the amount of East Coast and uh, the amount of East Coast, particularly New York accents I heard. I never, I never been around so many New Yorkers in my life until I moved here to Las Vegas. And a lot of it for Midwest transplants as well, particularly Chicago. Um, there's a lot of, of course, Californians here, but there's a big transplant population here from New York and Chicago. And a lot of that, you know, I've had different locals, especially when I first moved here, told me that's, you know, some that's connected to the mafia, right? Because of their connections to Chicago, to New York. Uh, some of these huge corporations, a lot of their top executives are, you know, New York guys, Chicago guys. But there's a lot of East Coast influence, a lot more East Coast influence here in Las Vegas, as far as, particularly as far as transplants than I would have thought. I would have thought Vegas was just going to be a complete suburb of Los Angeles and California. And, you know, some people joke that it is, but there's a lot of people here from the East Coast, Midwest, and just places I did not think so many other transplants would be here from other states, uh, really outside of California. And the 13th and final thing that surprised me about living here in Las Vegas, and I definitely did not know this until I moved here, uh, was how behind it is on the tech scene. Oh man, I came here from Silicon Valley. And you know, I was there, I did not consider myself to be like a tech guy, a tech person, ironically enough. I make my money online. <laughs> 
<laughs> Ironically enough, that's what I do. I make my money online. And when I came here to Las Vegas, and even still to some extent today, I see where like lots of businesses, they're just not tech savvy. They don't, you know, they don't understand how to like, incorporate anything really tech related. Some don't even have a website. Um, they have little to no use of social media that they do. Um, a lot of them still use, especially the big corporations will use like traditional marketing. I mean, we've got a lot of people who've been, you know, in marketing for, you know, 30, 40 plus years and they just, you know, the, some of the technology we have now that's new, they just can't like wrap their heads around it. Uh, when I came here, I remember the first couple of years I was here, um, nobody heard of Uber or Lyft yet here. They hadn't heard of Uber. And it was just totally a foreign concept. And I was like, you never heard of Uber? And be like, no, like, what's that? And I'm like, well, you will hear about them when they come here. It's going to be war with the taxi companies, which it was. And Uber won that war and Lyft won that war, which I knew they would. Um, but like, they'd never heard of that before coming here. Like, you know, certain things that w the ways, way businesses operate here, especially because it was such a small town for so long. And, you know, so much of it was, I guess you could say connections and um, there are already systems in place. That's the way I'll put it. It's very much a small town, a lot of systems in place, right? Like getting certain jobs, like you really had to know someone to be connected to get into that job or someone to let you have a job, you know, unless, um, unless like, you know, you paid for it. Like that was some of the stories you hear here around here. That's changing. That's, that has changed. So some of those systems that were still in place for how things work here in Las Vegas and a lot of the technologies come in um, has really Push that. I mean, when Uber was coming here, I remember talking to a lady when I signed up to drive for Uber, and this was um, almost the last major market to get Uber. The only other place was St. Louis. So Vegas was like one of the last major metro areas to hold out and try to prevent Uber and Lyft from getting here because they're very, very resistant to that change and that technology coming in. So that's going to be continue to change over time. That was something that definitely surprised me, particularly as someone who came from Silicon Valley and now works in, and makes my money online, right? So guys, if there's anything I missed in this video, please tell me about it down below in the comments section. I'll be happy to uh, share some more of these. I really wanna hear what you guys have to say down there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being so awesome. Subscribe if you haven't done so yet. That's it for this video. I am Jacob, and this is my life in Vegas.